All right. This is a 1989 Johnson uh, 15 horsepower outboard engine. What we're going to do today is we're going to remove the carburetor and change the gaskets out. It turns out this engine has been sitting for a while and it's leaking a little bit. Here is the model number of the engine. Make sure it matches yours. All right. So this is the carburetor kit rebuild kit we're going to use. This is the Sierra 18-7219. It cost me about 20 bucks. It is an uh, aftermarket part, but it works just fine and it's high quality. All right, let's get started here. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is you want to remove the fuel line. We all know how to do that. There's a little clip right there. You pull it off. And you're also going to um, pop the cover off the engine and that's easy enough also. Once you have the engine exposed you're going to go to where the um, the air intake bonnet is and it kinda looks like that. It's in the um, I guess the front part of the motor and you're gonna start removing the screws to take the um, the air bonnet off. You have to take the air bonnet off to get to the carburetor there are a total of four of these screws which hold the top part of this air bonnet on. It's like the top half of it. And you can see the other half still remains. And that is what the screw looks like. And um, you can even put a um, either a screwdriver on it or you can use the proper um, socket for that. Once you have the cover off, then you're going to remove the rest of the air intake which requires the removal of these two screws right here. I highly recommend um, taking these screws and putting them in a place where you're not going to lose them. Um, it happens almost every time where when you take something apart and you try to put it back together you're either missing screws or you have an extra screw left over. But in this case we're going to make sure that doesn't happen. In the front you're going to notice this little adjustment knob right there. Pull that adjustment knob off. It just pulls right out and then you'll be able to remove the air bonnet, the air intake. Okay, so this is the top of the carburetor and I actually froze this image because I wanted you to take a look at this plate. It's an L-shaped plate that's on top of the carburetor and as you can see on the top of the image it actually guides the choke pull. So you don't want to lose this. This is an important part. And also place this with your screws and be very careful. Let's remove it. There, comes right off, pulls right out. And here's where you're just going to simply also take the choke pull off. The, the choke pull actually has a little slot and you can see by the arrow that it's pointing to a little lever that's sticking up off the top of the carburetor. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to take a Phillips screwdriver and we're going to start removing the top plate off the top of the carburetor. And the main reason why we have to take this plate off is because it's connected to the throttle linkage and the, um, the throttle linkage is holding everything together. So you have to remove the throttle linkage. How do you do that? You got to take these screws out and you have to remove the top part of the carburetor. Once you take the screws out, you'll be able to lift this uh, plate up and out of the way and disconnect the linkage. Be careful not to lose the little washers that are under these screws and also put the screws in a place where you're not going to lose them. Okay, carefully lift the plate up. You're going to see that the linkage is connected. And you have to get it up and off. From here, you're going to remove this top gasket. And we're going to replace that anyway. Notice the linkage handle that's hanging right there. That's where that top part of the carb carburetor plate was connected. Okay, you see my fingertip? You see how I'm pointing to that nut right there? You're going to have to get a tool on that to remove that nut. And there's also one on the other side as well. That 
is what holds the carburetor on. That one on that side is easy to get to where I'm pointing, but that one there is almost impossible unless you have a tiny little pair of pliers. It's almost impossible to get an open end wrench in there, and you'll never get a socket in there. What I ended up using is this tiny little pair of channel lock pliers. You could see a standard pair and the tiny little pair that I have in my hands right here. This is a really, really good tool to have in your toolbox because it allows you to get into real tight places. I really didn't want to use this thing because pliers tend to tear up nuts and bolts and round them off. And um, I really had no choice. I'm sure they make a tool that fits in here. I can't imagine what it would be, but I don't have it. So I decided to get these pliers on there um, just to break that nut free. And as you can see, you can actually get it in there. Not easily, but you can get it in there just to remove that nut. Make sure you get a good grip on it because when you slip over the top of the nut, that's when you actually damage it. And luckily it wasn't extremely tight, so it actually broke free pretty easily. And once I broke it free, then I was able to get my fingertip on it and just spin it off. And um, of course, you don't want to drop that in there because you don't know exactly how far down it's going to go. So I actually just loosened it a little bit and then I went over to the other side to start removing the other nut on the other side. I decided to do this in fast motion because unscrewing that nut took over a minute. So there we go, removing it. No big deal, came off pretty easily. Okay, as always, just like we did with the other hardware, make sure you don't lose these nuts when you remove them because these are the nuts that are holding on your carburetor to your engine. All right, what I found that I had to do is I actually had to take two hands and take a fingertip on each hand and kind of wiggle the nut off of this tight one over here. And that way we were able to get the carburetor off. I wasn't able to get one hand in, but two hands, I could just get my fingertips on it. And then, of course, we're just going to disconnect the fuel line, and that'll remove the carburetor. You'll pull that off of the little uh, thing coming off the carb. All right, so you'll also notice the main carburetor manifold gasket that you're going to pull off. It's going to be on those two studs, so take that off carefully. All right, so let's get into the fun part here. Um, I recommend doing this part disassembling the carburetor in a pan. I'm just using an oil drain pan and um, that way if there's any parts or of course any gas you can see is leaking out of this thing it's not going to end up all over the garage floor um, and we can kind of keep it contained. So let's start taking it apart. There are some screws as you can see this is a Phillips head screw and we're going to carefully remove the screws and take the carburetor apart and get start uh, start changing the um, the gaskets out. Okay, so of course, finish removing the screws, and you can now separate the float bowl from the actual carburetor there. You're going to see some gaskets that are going to come out. Here's a little oval-shaped gasket that sits in the bottom of the float bowl, and that seats with a part that sits on the other half. You can see, see the shape there that sits right into the bottom of the float bowl. And you can even see the float there, the black ring that goes around it. All right, let's also take a look at the gaskets. And yes, the gaskets are spread out on the floor, and this is not something I'm recommending, so don't do this. There's going to be some extra parts in here. The parts you don't need, you're simply going to discard. The reason why they do that is because these kits are designed to fit multiple different carburetors on multiple different engines, and they just kind of package it all up together. All right, so let's take our first gasket that we're going to do, and it's that um, egg-shaped um, oval gasket right there that I'm placing on the floor. You can see there's two of them. And so that's the one that we pulled out before, and we're going to take it, 
and we're simply going to press it with our fingertips very carefully back in there and it should fit nice and perfectly in that spot. All right, for now, let's take that bottom half of the float bowl and put it on the side and let's start working on the other side. There's a little tiny little pin that holds this float into place where it pivots. You'll pull the pin out and you'll take the float out and there's a little tiny little needle valve that's kind of connected to the float. I kind of missed it on the video there, but there's the needle valve. It's replaceable. We're going to replace that. That's part of the kit. So you can put that on the side. There's also a tiny little hose. I'm going to pull the hose off. Hopefully I don't miss it with the video. There's the little hose. Take that little hose and you're going to take that and discard it also. There's going to be a new hose. And the centerpiece right there, be careful you don't break that or lose that because this little centerpiece right here is about $40 to $50 to replace if you happen to break it or lose it. Okay, so there's the new little black hose that came in the kit. We're going to put that in place. Try to remember how the other hose came out so you know how to put the new hose back in. It's very simple. There's a little thing where it pokes into on the bottom of the carburetor, and then it's going to connect to that thing that I just showed you that costs 40 or 50 bucks to replace if it breaks. So as you can see, I'm trying to poke it in there to, to kind of demonstrate how it goes. But um, when it comes time to putting the whole thing back together, I'll spend some time putting that in. Right now, I just wanted to see how it fits. Okay, so let's place that carburetor straight down. And you see where that needle valve was sitting in that seat? We're going to have to remove that seat. And as you can see, it's slotted on top, so you're going to put a screwdriver on it. But the trick behind this is you have to use a perfect screwdriver to remove it and, of course, a perfect screwdriver to put it back in because you can easily damage it. It's soft brass, so you have to be extra careful with this part right here. Let's get started. Here's the little baggie that contains the new seat and the little valve, if you could see it in there, and a little black washer as well. So let's get started trying to take this seat out. All right, like I said, you want to use a screwdriver that fits perfect, okay? And you're also going to hold very, very firmly on the carburetor and push down while you turn counterclockwise. It's not always going to be easy to remove, but once it does come out, it just kind of snaps and, and it starts unscrewing. Inspect the hole. Make sure there's nothing in there. And do that before you start screwing in the new seat. One of the things that I left out in this video is I wanted to show you that when you have the carburetor apart like this, it's always a good opportunity to flush it out. Okay, so what you can use is you can use some gum out carburetor cleaner or some WD-40 or simply you can even use a um, air compressor and use your air spray nozzle on it and just blow the jets out and all the passages out on the carburetor in the carburetor. So that way if there's anything stuck in there, you'll shoot it out and it'll be clean. So here we are, here, here I am snugging up the, uh, the screw a little bit, the seat. And don't overdo it. And when you put that screwdriver on there, I can't emphasize enough, be very careful because if you skip the screwdriver over that seat, you're going to damage the seat and then you're going to have to buy a new carburetor um, rebuild kit and gasket set because um, I don't know where you'd be able to find one of those seats all by itself. And they damage very easily because they're made out of brass. Okay, so... All right, so... Here is the old needle valve. There's a tiny little spring on there. You're going to discard the needle valve because they give you a new needle valve in the bag. Okay? But the tiny little spring is something you're going to keep. And that's going to hook back on to the float. All right? So let's get to the next part here. In the next part, you're going to carefully put that hose on into the carburetor. And also it has to connect to that little plastic piece that I mentioned again that it was 40 or 50 bucks and it's going to slide back into the center of where that um, where it came from and make sure that it's sitting properly it will kind of move around a little bit don't don't worry too much about that just make sure the hose is not kinked and it's um, connected well 
All right, the next part is putting the little needle valve properly onto the float again, okay? So remember, you're gonna change the needle valve, but you're gonna keep that tiny little spring. And the, um, the needle valve is gonna sit in that seat, and then you're gonna take that pin. Now the pin is one thing also that they don't give you a replacement of, so don't lose that pin, I forgot to mention that. Put that pin down in the pan and you're going to need that again. And that is going to allow the float to pivot properly and open and close that valve. You can see how that works. As the gas fills up in the float bowl, the, the, um, the float will move and it will either open or close the valve depending on the situation. Change the gasket. You'll see that the gasket will fit uh, a new gasket will go right in there. Make sure you use the right one. There's probably at least two to three different gaskets to choose from. Make sure the holes line up and the little passages line up. And once you get that on there, then you're going to start putting the screws back in and you're going to secure the, um, the, the carburetor float bowl back to the carburetor. There is no need to use any kind of um, gasket compound or gasket cement on these gaskets and in this application. Just make sure you secure the, uh, the screws and as with anything when you have multiple screws and you're tightening them, make sure you stagger them as you tighten them so that um, the case goes on straight and not warped. Okay, now moving on. The adjustment knob that we took off earlier on in this video will have to be um, unscrewed from the, um, the, the top part of the, of the carburetor that we initially took off. And you'll, you'll do that by simply putting the knob back on there and unspinning it. And don't do that. Don't use the tip of that as a pry and try to remove the little um, rubber um, washer that's in there. But that little rubber washer will need to be um, changed and they give you a new one. But again, don't put anything in there that's going to damage that, including especially the um, the adjustment um, uh, part itself, like we did momentarily. So um, once you get the the new one in there, you're going to simply thread this um, adjustment knob back into the carburetor top, and it's almost like it's going to cut its own threads. Don't worry about it. You're going to see some tiny little pieces of plastic shaving, and it's uh, not a big deal. You just kind of wipe those away, but you're going to cut your own threads through that um, little that uh, little um, that little washer that they that they have you put back in that hole. All right, here's where the carburetor goes back onto the engine. That little linkage piece, you're going to just put on and hold it in place with your fingertips. You're going to take this um, new gasket, put it in place. Make sure it's the correct one. They might give you more than one depending on the engine. Make sure there's no dirt or anything in that hole. Make sure it's clean and place that in there and then slide the carburetor onto those two studs uh, very carefully. Once the carburetor is on those two studs, you're going to take your nut and if there's a washer, make sure there's a washer that's put in there and you're going to use your fingers and thread the nut back on to those two studs to hold the carburetor on. The one on the outside is easy, but the one there on the inside, as we mentioned earlier, is really tight. Probably best to take one fingertip from each hand and kind of just spin the, the nut on very carefully using um, two hands, two fingers from, from uh, uh, two hands, and it makes it a little bit easier. Once you get the nut on, spin it on as much as you can by finger, and then you're going to use your pliers to make it tight. All right, moving right along, you're going to take the new gasket and place it on top. Make sure the surface is clean. There's nothing in there, no dirt, debris, hair, anything like that. Make sure you use the right gasket. Again, there'll be, there'll be a few gaskets in that bag, so make sure you just pick the right one and you place it on top. And from there, you're going to take the top part of the carburetor and you're going to start putting the top part of the carburetor on there with the linkage. When you put the little linkage part in there, make sure it just fits very carefully into the little hole on the top part of the carburetor. 
just like that and then place the cover back into place so the, so the screw holes line up tighten the screws in a crosswise fashion so that there's no chance of either breaking or warping the cover there might be different size screws for different holes make sure that you um, keep in mind that uh, that you don't put the wrong screw in the wrong hole now you are going to place that L-shaped plate back on there which helps guide the choke and you're going to put the choke back in through the hole and make sure it fits in the slot on that part that comes off the top of the carburetor top plate now you're going to take the bottom part of the air bonnet the air intake you're going to put it in place and put the two screws in that you originally took out next take the top part put it in place and put the four screws in that holds it in place on the other side of the carburetor which I'm not showing here make sure you put the fuel line back onto the carburetor and use the proper clamp if you have one if not if you push it on there really hard just make sure it doesn't leak anyway I hope you enjoyed the video I hope this helped sometimes you could do stuff yourself and save you know 300 bucks bringing your um, boat engine to a boat mechanic could be quite pricey but I think if you can just watch this video you can realize that little jobs like this you can do all by yourself and they're not that hard don't be afraid please subscribe please give me a thumbs up and please comment have a great day